Hi, this is Shai Reyes, Denver, Colorado, CVI 2019. With me is Dr. Khaldun Al Aswad. He is director of the cath lab at Henry Ford. Welcome, Dr. Al Aswad. Thank you so much for having me here. Today, you had uh, co chaired a shock session at CVI, and uh, it was a lot of discussion about hemodynamic support. Where in 2019, give us the bottom line. All right, so shock is becoming a hot. Uh, topic nowadays and um, honestly uh, uh, there are a lot of work on shock since 1974 the problem we have not been able to move the needle in mortality and as you know it's one of the most lethal disease <coughs> we treat in the cath lab and uh, uh, we knew from the clinical trials from shock trial that revascularization emerged as a very beneficial and it actually decreases mortality but after that the support device and hemodynamic support uh, was a practice and a practice without the previous like a kind of guidelines so the mortality stayed stagnant and lately our group in Henry Ford Hospital we started uh, uh, first we started the Detroit uh, uh, cardio, uh, cardiogenic shock initiatives then it became a national cardiogenic shock initiative and we were able to demonstrate that uh, the mortality decreased significantly from 50% to 30% in our, our patient. So there are much more national and international attention to patients who are presenting with shock. And that's actually posed a new question. How do we uh, institute the hemodynamic support in those patients? Because this is basically the next frontier. So um, of course, we have multiple devices. So the question, which device? when to uh, place the device. It seems that from the data, the earlier you institute the, the hemodynamic support, the better the outcome. Right. And there is actually more data building about instituting the hemodynamic support before revascularization, especially in shock patient. And that's a door to unloading trial. That was a pilot trial, 50 uh, patient. And now we're gonna have, actually the FDA gave us approval to run much more national and bigger trial. So what we faced at Henry Ford Hospital treating patient with a cardiogenic shock and even uh, using hemodynamic support uh, uh, to support uh, complex PCI, we learned a lot about the best practices in hemodynamic. First of all, uh, how to obtain access and uh, how to wean them and then how to close them how to kind of decannulate the patient and it depends on the device and which patient to select uh, for the device uh, for which device and when to actually decide to upgrade the device to more powerful or more supportive device most patient will actually do good with the moderate support with an impella cp or a tandem heart from uh, levanova obtaining access emerged as a very, very critical point because a lot of those patients actually suffer from vascular complications. So when you obtain access for hemodynamic support, you should use uh, ultrasound and fluoroscopic guidance uh, to obtain access from common femoral artery. Of course, uh, uh, other groups uh, basically started the axillary artery access and also the best practices in that axillary artery access are uh, emerging and evolving. Then you support them in the cath lab. Now there is a need to, ha uh, to have uh, much more uh, attention to hemodynamic outcome. So in the critical the, care situation. Exactly, so the right heart catheterization emerged and after that you send them to critical care uh, settings and what to do in a critical care setting, it's obviously it's a team approach and when to judge them that actually they're gonna, uh, they're gonna uh, get better and they're gonna tolerate decannulation or being separated from hemodynamics, we're developing this, uh, this criteria. Once you uh, declare the patient able to uh, kind of uh, survive without hemodynamic support, right. now what to do about decannulation. And actually um, at Henry Ford, we start using kind of prog progressively pushing the envelope. We start with the 14 French post hoc uh, uh, per close, uh, and we discovered that actually works. Uh, and we practice a dry hemostasis when you put a balloon and include the iliac artery. But nowadays, actually, we closed late, the last patient. It was a 22 French dry seal, and we closed it uh, post hoc with no pre-pre-close with a, um, a Manta device. And we actually discovered that if you put a 17 French cannula for a tandem heart, you still 
can actually uh, close the access in the cath lab percutaneously without having placed a pre-pre-close. You can actually ad hoc per-close with um, a dry seal and sometimes we combine a per-close with an angio seal to ensure complete hemostasis. So you, I just wanted to go back to the point of vascular access, which is a main barrier, as you said. Yeah. So in skilled labs, 14 to 21 ac fresh is not a problem, but when we go to the community, uh -huh. small hospital, don't you think there would be a, like a, a teaching curve or some proctorship to maintain good access and good closure for hemodynamics? Very, very important question. And, and uh, we know from the actually PROTECT2 trial, when we excluded the first uh, learning curve devices placed by the operators, we actually have better outcome. So there are definitely learning curves using these devices. And um, uh, I don't know what exact answer uh, to that question, but we definitely have to work on a better education and better training and probably simulation. Uh, and it, the, the cardiogenic shock and the shock patient in general is emerging now as another STEMI. So in the, back in the 1980s, 1990, we developed the regional STEMI programs where actually you have a, a hub and spoke program to send the STEMI patient to the PCI centers. I think shock should be now treated the same. And there is a paper by Mauricio Cohen and his group that actually talked about that. It's very valuable to review for anyone who is trying to uh, start the shock program. program. All right. So it sounds like the access is a, is a major uh, learning curve, learning the tools and understanding the shock patient and eventually mm -hmm. triaging the patient to the center with a high volume. Thanks so much, Dr. Westwood, for your time. This no is really a great uh, info about shock. Please watch this video and others on CVI YouTube channel. This is Shadid Reyes from Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.